the Vikings, a group of seafaring explorers and raiders with origins in Denmark, Sweden, and Norway, traveled all over the world between the 8th and 11th centuries. As warriors, traders, and settlers, the Vikings disrupted the lives of the groups they encountered, facilitating cultural exchange and often provoking a not-so-positive impression. As a result, contemporaries of the Vikings wrote extensively about their inhuman, fierce, and filthy ways. In fact, Viking behavior reveals a concern for cleanliness and hygiene, paying much attention to personal appearance. Many of the Vikings' hygienic practices reflected their daily lives, although there are some notable activities that are somewhat surprising. At the very least, they can make your teeth hurt. Vikings diligently cleaned and combed their hair. During the time of Viking activity, the Scandinavians were concerned about their appearance, especially their hair. According to a chronicle attributed to John of Wallingford, a 13th century English monk, the Vikings were, in keeping with the customs of the country, in the habit of combing their hair every day, bathing every Saturday, changing their clothes frequently, and drawing attention to themselves through many frivolous whims. Viking men seemed to wear their hair long in front, with short locks or shaved at the nape. Many recognize this today as a reverse mullet. The long locks could be pulled back, something women also did with their long hair. Viking burial grounds have revealed multiple tools, together with combs and other personal items. The combs were made of bone, horn, or metal, as well as tweezers, razors, and ear sticks. The personal grooming items were decorated with ornaments and, as indicated by the holes, were probably attached to the belt with a chain or hung around the neck or worn as brooches. Sometimes, the Vikings also carried their combs in boxes, underlining the tool's importance. Virtually all Viking men had facial hair trimmed and groomed. Trimming tools, such as razors, combs, and tweezers, were as commonly used on beards and mustaches as they were on the hair on the top of the Viking's head. Beard length was a sign of maturity and masculinity, while a lack of facial hair could be ridiculed. In Njal's saga, Njal was described as rich in goods and with a handsome face, although no beard grew on his chin. His lack of facial hair was something continually referred to, which earned him the nickname Immature Karl, while his sons were called Dung Beards. Njal's expertise and masculinity were constantly questioned due to his lack of facial hair, the text even implies that his sons, or at least his facial hair, were derived from dung and not from their father's fertility. The Vikings' dental modifications are unclear, but archaeologists discovered teeth among the remains in Scandinavian cemeteries in 2005 and in England in 2009. The teeth were intentionally filled with grooves, which may indicate victories against opponents. Another victory states that the Vikings sanded their teeth to intimidate their enemies. We also do not know what they used to file their teeth. However, David Swore, site manager in England, indicated that the file had been manufactured by a skilled professional. Viking baths and saunas were places of cleanliness and recreation. Bathing in a local stream during the summer months could alleviate the heat, while bathhouses and saunas were sources of heat and made an opportunity to sweat during the winter. Bathhouses and saunas were also meeting places and had medicinal value. A cold bath could relieve pain, while steam was intended to invigorate the spirit. Bathhouses and saunas could be built near natural hot springs or using heated water in large tubs. According to the sagas, some Vikings had advanced piping systems to carry hot and cold water for baths. Viking latrines were communal, but group facilities may also have been built within Malokas. Viking families lived in Malokas, wooden structures with thatched or peat roofs. The Vikings built long benches along the Malokas walls, which could have been used for sleeping or sitting. A fire in the middle of the house was a source of heat and light, and allowed for cooking. Without windows, the Malokas were foggy, and the dirt floors created a dusty, gray environment. Large families shared Malokas, which greatly reduced privacy. In the cold months, people and animals would take refuge in the Maloka, crowding the rooms even more. Evidence from Viking latrines in Denmark revealed parasites and germs, probably a consequence of animals and humans living side by side. Men and women wore clothes made of wool and linen. These items were washed by the women in nearby streams and lakes. Along with the concern for cleanliness and appearance, historical sources indicate that they paid attention to clothing and personal grooming. 
Havamal, an Old Norse poem, says, Though he may not be well dressed, no man should be ashamed of his shoes and shorts, nor of his horse, though he has done nothing. The same John of Wallingford noted that Vikings bathed on Saturdays. Viking Age writings indicate that men clean themselves every morning. Daily hygiene probably included the face and hands. Cleaning was not done throughout the day, according to some observers. The Vikings did not eat with forks. Instead, they used spoons, knives, and fingers. The eating knives were multifunctional and were also used for sharpening, hunting, fighting, and countless other tasks. Spoons and bowls were often made of wood. As cleaning utensils, the Vikings kept their spoons and knives close by. Sometimes they attached these objects to belts, but they could also be attached to a chain or a strap around the neck.